Hello fellow creatives, Katie here. In this video, I will be walking you through the painting process for White Rabbit in the Snow. I'm using m -gram watercolors on 14 by 20 inch cold press arches watercolor paper. And I will also be listing all of this down below. So if you have any questions, uh, be sure to look there first. In the beginning, you can see me mixing together Prussian blue, phthalo cyanine green, yellow shade, uh, Emerald green will work for this. That's just what I had on hand. And a little tiny bit of ivory black because I realized that mixing, mixing together just the Prussian blue and the green was too intense. And since the rabbit is white, if I made the background really bright, it might detract from the main subject. So I used a little bit of black just to just tone it down a bit. So the effect I'm going for in the background is a out of focus forest brush and trees. So I'm trying to give the general shape of branches and tree trunks without making any hard edges, which I did find really challenging. So I'm switching between a few different brushes and I'm not using any brush in particular. It's just what I had on hand and I would grab a brush because I needed something that was clean. The majority of it, the really large brush you see, is the 20, the number 20 round. But I also grab a couple mop brushes, and these are the big fluffy ones that I'm using to blend together the, the paint. So at first you see me using a mop brush that has black bristles on it and has like that clear glittery handle. I didn't realize how bad of a quality brush this was when I first grabbed it and what it did was it was leaving bristles in the paint and this is not good because if you don't pull them out right away it actually leaves marks in the paint itself so you see me switching to a white handled mop brush and I believe it is a three-quarter inch oval mop and the bristles on this are really, really soft and absolutely great for blending. Now, because I wetted the paper first, it's still really damp. So when I lay down the blues and greens over the top of that, I can still blend it into the paper. So throughout the background, uh, at first I started with really light tones. The way that I work in watercolor is I build the color up a lot like how you do with markers. So I start very light. I kind of lay out where I want all of the shapes to go and then I will build on that color. So I'll gradually make it darker and darker. So it's just easier for me to visualize where everything should go that way. If you would like to see me uh, kind of narrate more of these painting videos rather than just have them, you know, set to music, uh, be sure to let me know, give it a like, and I will continue um, uploading videos this way. So another brush you see me grab is, I believe, let's see, a small mop brush, the blue handled one and that's a quarter inch mop. So after I've decided that I have enough paint on the background and it's dark enough, uh, I finally do move on to the snow. With snow, you really, really do have to be very careful with this because when you're working with white and watercolor, once you put anything down on that paper, you can't go back. So unlike oils and acrylics, there's no undo button. You can't go back and cover it up without actually using an acrylic, which I do later on. And you'll see why I end up doing that. Underneath the rabbit, I did make it a little bit darker there because the rabbit is actually blocking the sun. You see me go in with that wad of blue. That is a kneaded eraser. And the reason I used that as opposed to an eraser that would just rub on the paper is I didn't want to completely remove all of the pencil lines that I laid down. Instead, I wanted to just lightly lift up just enough of the pencil that it wasn't so dark. 
I wasn't trying to remove all the lines though because I did need those to figure out where I was putting the fur and the general shape of the rabbit's body. And again, same technique here. I started very light first and then gradually pushed those shadows deeper, especially under the bottom half of the rabbit. Because we're working with a white um, subject here and we're working with watercolor, we want to be very careful about where the colors are laid down because once they're down, there's really no going back. With watercolor, sometimes you can just apply water to kind of soften it and use the brush to absorb some of the pigment back off the paper, but it's never going to be pure white again. So making sure that those shadows and shapes are in the correct place is very important. Watercolor, at least the way that I do it, is not something you want to rush. I'm using yellow ochre for the rabbit's eye and along the inside of its ear. Now what you don't see on the screen are the reference photos that I'm looking at. And I have maybe eight or nine different photos. So that way, I'm just looking to see the general shape that the rabbit makes when it's sitting or when it's looking up. I take special note of when a rabbit's nose is tilted up and smelling the air, that it puts its ears back, or it'll tilt its nose down when its ears are up. Those are the things you look at when you're looking at reference photos. You're not going online to find a very specific photo to exactly copy it. I did find one that I really, really loved the color palette and I loved the background. And so one of them was definitely the inspiration, but I made sure to use multiple photos to get the best combination for the image that I wanted to create. Here you can see I'm going back in and I'm using a white gouache because I realized the paper is actually an off-white and when I applied the white gouache it was brighter than the paper itself so I decided to go back in there and use the gouache to brighten up some of the snow areas. And then I decided to see if white ink might work better and it didn't so I switched back to the gouache. This last bit here is when I finally pulled out some white acrylic paint and the reason for this is that I wanted the texture, I wanted the thickness, and I especially wanted the opacity of the white paint. When adding snowflakes, you don't want them to be perfectly round because snowflakes aren't perfectly round. Sometimes they clump together, sometimes it's just a single snowflake. So when you're adding them, there's no rhyme or reason on placement. You definitely do not want to just evenly place them into the background. I also went back into the snow on the ground, adding white paint to a little bit on the rabbit's head and some on the rabbit's back. For the rabbit's whiskers, I just used the white gouache again. I'm signing my name by using a 2-0 liner brush. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for joining me everyone, I'll see you next time.